What up team? I am Melanie Curtis. This video today is talking about teams, team building in particular, and the specific question that I received of why is it so hard to find a team? Implied in that question of why is it so hard? It implies that there's a frustration in the experience. So what I really hear in that question is a very simple question of how do I do it? Like, how do I form a team? Because I really want a team and I'd like, I'd like it to happen. So the real question we're addressing today is how do I form a team? First, remember that when we get bit by the team bug, like the four-way bug. And I say four-way because typically that's the team need that people find that they have because four-way is the biggest discipline in our competitive skydiving arena and it's, it is so much fun. Ugh. Like seriously, I can speak to this very, very, from very personal experience in that I always say this, that teams are just by far one of the best things in our sport. And it's because they're so much fun. It's because there's so much you get out of it. And it's because there's this really clearly defined path of how we can participate in skydiving, grow, get better, connect with people, feel like you're a part of something, feel just just there's so many good feelings that come with being a part of a team and a part of that pursuit. So the first thing is to remember when you're in search of your next team or your first team that that want of it, that desire for it is very normal and totally pretty much comes with the territory. So that's first, know that it's normal. Because team training is so fun and so awesome and we love it so much, it inevitably brings with it, the, the search for a team inevitably brings with it huge anxiety. Like until you have your team set, there is this possible future where you don't have a team. And that is just like, no, we can't, we can't even have that thought. It's like completely anxiety inducing. And so therefore, typically we bring that anxiety into the conversations that we have and just the seeking that we're doing for finding a team. And the whole experience can be extremely stressful if we let it. So remember that it's normal to really want the team and to recognize that because of that, we often get really attached to the outcome and <sighs> relaxing, detaching from that outcome. I talk about detaching from the outcome a lot in skydiving because skydiving is something we really, really love. So whatever we choose to do in the sport, no matter what it is, whether it's a team, whether it's getting on a record, whether it's, I don't know, becoming a coach or an AFF instructor, or whether it's just, you know, asking someone to jump that you don't know, that stuff we can, because we care so much, because it's so fun, it can also have that sort of yin yang emotional experience of real stress and anxiety. So remember just to step back from that, connect to what you can control and diffuse those sort of fear emotions as much as you can as you go forward. So the next thing you want to think about is you know the emotional part of it. You're feeling it. You're doing the work to detach from the outcome. That's happening. So the next thing you want to think about is when you are in conversation with potential teammates is to continually remember to exhale that tension, detach from the outcome, and put forth a very simple black and white communication on what you are ideally after. One, the communication should always come with no pressure, right? Because you don't want, you don't want to pressure your teammates into being on a team with you anyway. Like that's not going to work. So like when we're thinking about talking to teammates and when we actually are talking to them, remember to bring with it no pressure that just like, you know, Hey, well, my goal is I would really love to do X number of jumps and I have this amount of money set aside to do it and I can do this number of training days. I'm willing to travel. There's so many details that go into it and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But having that clear idea of what your ideal is, but also knowing and having no pressure and really just wanting to be in discussion with the people that you are 
deciding whether or not to be teammates with, that you don't just want to desperately want them as a teammate, no matter what they say, you'll take them as a teammate. And no matter what you, what they say that they can or can't do, you, you have to have them as a teammate. Like that energy is just never going to work and it's never going to inspire someone to be on a team with you. So try to just step back from that and be chill and just communicate what you're at and be open to a discussion to open up. Oh, <laughs> whatever, that sounds weird, but be open and really want discussion to open up. Another thing that's typical in searching for teams as a new person trying to get on a team or trying to form a team is this feeling that how do I get on a team or how do I find teammates willing to give me a chance? Like how do I get someone to give me a chance? Like I know that I have what it takes. I know I'll do the work. I'm, I'm committed. Like how do you get people to give you a chance when you have no experience and you haven't been a teammate, but you basically need a shot in order to get the, you know, what they are looking for. So it's sort of this feels like this catch 22. What you can do in this case is basically get, ask the coaches that you have worked with to speak for you. You know, if your voice is not yet a trusted voice in skydiving and people you're, who you're talking with don't necessarily trust that you will do what you say you will do, that you are as good as you say you are or whatever, and you might not be saying that, but like maybe you're telling them about camps that you've done and this and that, but like what you can do is actually ask a trusted voice that you've worked with to stand for you, to say, hey, to speak to the potential teammates so that they can feel more confidence in the idea of being on a team with you in the idea of joining together and, and working toward these lofty goals that you both have so that, I mean, basically you want that because I would want a teammate that cared about who they were getting on a team, a team with like, that's a cool thing. In fact, if you kind of think about it and that it's not about you, but it's more about what they are bringing to the goals that they have set for themselves. And how awesome is that, you know, to have a person who's really wanting to do the due diligence to create something that's going to last and go the distance. We'll get you guys to nationals or we'll get you guys through the season. That's a really, really great thing. So when you come up against that, instead of going like, Oh, they won't give me a chance, which is totally normal. Instead, look at it and go, that's cool. That's really cool. And I'm actually glad you're asking and I'll have someone, someone let you know. And even if you don't have someone to let them know, you can still appreciate that and acknowledge that as a great thing to do for your team. Whether you guys end up on a team or not, you can say, Hey man, I get it. And that's totally understandable. I'm, I'm similar in that I care a huge deal about putting together something that's really going to work. So I, I respect that. And here's what I can tell you, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, or here's the person I can have you talk to that can vouch for my skills. So if you're noticing, getting a team together seems like a lot of talking, right? Like seriously, getting a team together is a lot of talking. It's a lot of communication. So much communication takes place in both forming a team and absolutely in being on a team. So when you're in the process of building a team or seeking teammates or whatever, remember that that is part of the deal. Like this, it isn't just about getting your stress relieved and having your team set and, and ready. Cause that will diffuse, that'll put the pin in the balloon and you will feel so much better when your team is committed. But if you com have committed prematurely to a situation that hasn't been properly vetted, you will regret that because likely that team will not go the distance, will not have the foundation and communication and awareness of what the goals are. What do you guys, how do you align on what you, how you want to approach it? Do you want coaching? Do you want to do tunnel time? How many skydives? What, what's the budget for the team? How many, is it weekends? Is it five day camps? Like there are so many things to discuss when you are forming a team 
so many things to get aligned on because it's, it's rare that people come to a team search with exactly the same goals. So it, it requires that back and forth open dialogue to A, just get the initial trust of, yeah, let's do this. Do, do we like each other? Yeah, let's try. Let's, let's continue the conversation. And then continuing that conversation up and up as you look at all the details that go into the real commitment of, of what doing a team really looks like. So all of that communication is part of it. So it can feel really hard to be patient during that period. Like, I just want to get to this. I just want to get to the skydiving. I just want someone to say yes and start training. Well, know that that is what you're doing in having these discussions is you're working towards something like you're, you're working toward that so that it will last and actually be the team experience you really want. So when you're talking about all these details, it's very important to know that compromise is almost inevitable. Like you might want, you might have this idea in your head of the perfect team that everybody has X number of dollars, everybody can afford 300 skydives, everybody can afford to have a coach every single camp, everybody can afford two hours of tunnel time every camp, and maybe you can, and that's so awesome. I, that's a super cool, epic experience, and I hope that you find teammates that can do that if that's what you're after. The reason I bring that up is that typically people will have parameters from their life that will dictate what they can do on a team, and so... The reason I bring this, this up is that it's essential that you are ready and willing and open to compromise. I'm not saying sacrifice your goals, but think to yourself, what is my ideal team situation? And secondly, what is, what is it that I would minimally take or minimally accept to do a team at all this year? Like, do, would I rather do it ideal or nothing? Would I rather do it ideal or, you know what, I would rather, I really want to do a team. I want experience. I don't want to spend the year not doing, doing a team. So I will accept fewer jumps or I will accept less tunnel time. But you know what, I won't accept maybe not using a coach. Like maybe that's the thing that you're really firm on because you're young and you just want someone there to have the leadership role. I don't know. That's just one way. Maybe you're like, no, I definitely want X number of skydives and I will compromise on the amount of tunnel time. And yeah, okay, maybe we can alternate camps, use a coach one camp and then maybe not the next camp. There's lots of ways to compromise, but be ready for that and be open to that and figure out for yourself as you go into these discussions, what you really will feel good about so that when you do, when you do make the commitment to this team, that you can feel really good about it, that it's not going to be some seed of resentment that grows through the season that you've agreed to do something you really don't want to do. Like that would be on you if that caused problems in the team environment. So really make sure to get clear on what your goals are and what you would be truly happy to accept at a minimal level. All right. Another thing to consider is where do I find teammates? <laughs> you know, like, do they just poof out of midair and they're there and, oh, great. Yay, we have a four-way team. Well, of course, that's not typically how it works. I suppose if you're at a big drop zone, maybe there's lots of people there that are, are good potential teammates and you can do a really local team and that's awesome. That's super cool. Um, but sometimes it does happen that the people that want to do what you're up to maybe aren't at your drop zone and you kind of have to look out into sort of the bigger skydiving world to make connections, to see where people are, to see what options are, are available. So you, what you can do there is you can share on social media that what you're up to and what you're looking to do. If you have a skydiver base in your, in your network, you can ask the coaches that you know to keep their ears to the ground, tell them your goals, tell them what you're looking for, and maybe they'll hear about other people who are looking to do the same thing. It's possible that you'll connect with some people that are willing to travel to your drop zone. That happens all the time. So... Yeah, I would put it out there to your network and definitely to the professionals in your network who are basically people 
who get information like this regularly from people. For example, me, let me know. Drop me an email of the team situation you're looking for, where you're training, how much money you're willing to spend. I mean, you don't have to say that if you don't want to, but you can and let me know and I'll, I'll put my ear to the ground for you. If anybody else sends me an email, I will help connect you if it makes sense. But that's just one example of how to get teammates, certainly to talk it up at your home drop zone and certainly to plant seeds in the minds of people that maybe weren't considering doing a team, but maybe they just never thought about it. So there might be people around your local drop zone that don't seem like they're potential teammates, but maybe would be open to it if given the idea. So that's what I would suggest to you in terms of finding teammates. The last thing I'll say about this is that is to reiterate that point I made earlier that this part of teams is actually a part of making a team. The the torture <laughs> the torture of getting through this time of finding teammates when it really is a possibility that you don't know if you'll be able to put a team together. I mean obviously a team is theoretically something that's outside of our control. So anything that, that we experience, and this is sort of skydiving and life stuff, sort of a, a, a trick, a mental and emotional trick to take to this, given it can be so much that thing that we really want, is to really let go, you know, to just release the white knuckles and bring a bit of faith and trust into the search, like rest into your positive feelings about team building and about doing a team at all and about why you're excited about it and detach from the outcome. God, I'm going to say that time and again. I know I probably should find some other words to use, but release the white knuckles on that, on that need for it to happen. And it's very much more likely to happen as a result. Seems so counterintuitive, but you know, like when people are like really desperate and really like ugh, super, super intense about something in that sort of not awesome way, that does your search a disservice. That does your relationship building through the the teammate introductory process. It does those, those relationships a disservice. Whereas if you can show up with real ease about yourself and a real trust that like you're, you believe that the right team will come. You believe that when you connect and meet the right teammates and that you guys have a vibe and you, you work together, you'll know that. So there's some trust there and there's some faith in that. And bringing that energy to the process really does typically serve it to happen more likely. So that is what I would suggest. Way easier said than done. It is definitely an understandably stressful process. So remember that. Keep breathing. Keep going back to this list and revisiting these things as maybe the stress or the anxiety comes back up as you keep going. That is very normal. So there is plenty more to say on teams. That is for dang sure. <laughs> But this one is done for now. We got some team building action. But if you have any other questions, if you are not part of the VSC yet, please join us. Uh, and, and we can speak to stuff that you are wanting to learn about more specifically. If you are a member already and have a question that you haven't put out there yet, by all means, put, put it up. Post it in the group. I am ready to look at it and I look forward to addressing it for you. And yeah, rock on team. See you next time. <laughs> you know?